A specific immune response, also called a tertiary immune response, singles out one particular agent that can harm us and responds to that. For example, if we catch a certain virus, our specific immune system will destroy that particular virus. Specific immune responses in our body are carried out by two main types of cells. One type are called B lymphocytes, or simply B cells, and another type are called T lymphocytes, or simply T cells. B cells and T cells are both types of white blood cells. Here we'll introduce you to T cells and what they do. Our body has two main types of T cells, helper T cells and killer T cells. We'll have a look at each of these types and how they work. Like all blood cells, T cells are made in red bone marrow. But T cells mature in the thymus gland, a little gland under the collarbone. That's where they get their name T cells. The thymus gland is part of the lymphatic system, so T cells are found in the lymphatic system, but also in the circulatory system or bloodstream. They circulate through the whole body, scouting for cells that have been infected or cancer cells. We'll start looking at helper T cells and how they work. Let's consider a bacterium. It has antigens on its surface, which will show as little red circles. We see that a white blood cell is engulfing this bacterium. White blood cells like this one have organelles called lysosomes in them. These are filled with enzymes that can break down ingested materials. As the bacterium is broken down, its antigens are carried toward the surface of the white blood cell. When they reach the surface, they are displayed or presented at the ends of protein structures that were already present on the membrane of the cell. We'll watch as helper T cell comes toward this cell and attaches itself to it. The presence of the antigen causes this T cell to be activated and make identical clones or copies of itself. When activated, these helper T cells release chemical signals. These chemical signals stimulate B cells to clone copies of themselves and produce large numbers of antibodies to fight intruders. They also stimulate other white blood cells, like macrophages, to engulf and destroy intruding cells. So the main purpose of helper T cells is to identify intruders and kickstart the immune system to fight them. When helper T cells are finished their job, usually after a few days, most of them will self-destruct. But a few will remain in the body for a long time. These are called memory T cells. A memory T cell has had an experience with a particular antigen from a bacterium, virus, or cancer cell. Therefore, it can better recognize the same antigen when it encounters it again at a future time. So when it encounters this antigen a second time, it will be activated more quickly, it'll clone faster, and it will initiate a quicker and stronger immune response. Now we'll have a look at killer T cells and how they work. Our body produces a huge number of killer T cells, with many different variations of receptors on their surface. This particular killer T cell has a receptor that will bind with a specific antigen on the surface of this virus infected cell, or cancer cell. When the killer T cell binds to this particular cell, it becomes activated and makes clones or exact copies of itself. Like all cells, killer T cells have vacuoles. Some of the vacuoles are filled with chemicals that will perforate or put holes in a cell membrane. These are represented as little blue particles here. Other vacuoles are filled with enzymes that will cause a cell to die. The membranes around the vacuoles prevent these chemicals from affecting the killer T cell itself. The newly formed killer T cells move out looking for cells to attack. These new killer T cells are equipped with receptors that will bind to the same antigen that activated their parent cell to duplicate and make them. Killer cells look for antigens on the surfaces of virus-infected cells or cancer cells. One of our cells finds a cancer cell. 
This cancer cell carries a copy of the same antigen that activated the original parent killer T cell. So our killer T cell binds to this cancer cell. The killer T cell releases chemicals that puncture the cell membrane of the cancer cell. The killer T cell then releases chemicals that go through the holes in the membrane and kill the cancer cell. This killer T cell produces more deadly chemicals to store in its vacuoles and it is now ready to find and kill another cancer cell. After they have killed a large number of cells, most killer T cells will self-destruct. But a few memory killer T cells will remain in the body for a long time, so they can launch a new attack if the need arises. So to summarize, our body constantly produces many killer T cells. A particular killer T cell can be activated by a virus infected cell or cancer cell carrying the specific antigen it can bind to. Once activated, this killer T cell divides and produces many identical copies of itself. Each new killer T cell that is formed seeks out more virus infected cells or cancer cells to kill. When viruses enter the body, they infect body cells and use them as factories to reproduce themselves. A killer T cell will destroy these infected cells before they get a chance to become virus factories. So in this way, killer T cells help rid the body of viruses and cancer cells. They form a very important part of our immune system.